Well, I'm going to show you first. first. I've, I've been lately just kind of sharing with you on a personal, personal level. On a daily, daily basis, basis, since I got my vitamins, vitamins this is a secret for 5,000. I'm not sure if you're 50,000 ninjas, ninjas, there's other brands, brands that you can also get. get. Um, I've been waking up with chemical allergies, like these bananas. You know, you can find the meat bananas that are about to go bad, and you will get them for cheaper, you know. And this is right when they're actually perfect and they're kind of speckled. Um, and you can eat them like crazy. I had like uh, 12 bananas the other day. The day. You, you can eat up to 30, and as we've seen with banana girl, you can have actually up to 90 bananas, bananas in one day. day. So it's not a lot, lot of most people, people at least uh, think so. But well, actually, I want to show you that was kind of what I wake up to, and I want to show you the pineapple um, pomegranate um, smoothie, which is a pomegranate. These are all organic. So you've got the pomegranate, and I'm going to show you how to easily uh, dismantle, dismantle the seeds from, from the pomegranate. I'm going to show you the proper way to, to do pineapple. For instance, holding this pineapple upside down in the meantime, overnight, it allows the sweetness from the bottom of the pineapple to kind of go through the entire pineapple so you get it all sweet instead of sour. So I'm just going to have it upside down, down for right now. now. That, that over there, I want to show you where we go. I'll take those bananas, I'll take the bananas I can, and kind of fill them to the top with the cut up apples. So you got apples and bananas, a real simple procedure there. And, um, as you can see, um, and you know, I like to mix in just some of my herbs that I have. At night, I like to put something, as you all know, the Rishi mushroom. I'm pretty, um, pretty strong advocate and voice on the Rishi. It's, it's not very popular, uh, not very well known in the Western world, when it's usually virtually everywhere in the world uh, in medicine. So just a, just a couple drops, just like so, in my Vitamix. And I've got a big scoop here of hemp, whole hemp, cacao. Uh, there's goji, there's banana peels, and all kinds of ra random herbs in this. I like just one giant scoop that is about a tablespoon. This is the funnest uh, fresh, and if you watch some of my other videos, I'm probably put into this video, was um, this is fresh, raw, organic leaves of my moringa, like this tree over here, from tropical Missouri. Um, we, we use the dry container Vitamix, which is sitting over there, and it actually holds the um, herbs up in like an upward motion. So it actually... Um, can, you can actually mix different herbs. So say you bought our acai herbs, you bought our moringa herbs, whether it's uh, freeze-dry or the complex blend, or we have now turmeric, which we put the raw turmeric in here, um, wild-crafted. Everything's wild-crafted here at Bot Bomb Trees in our raw, um, our raw food or superfood section, uh, whether that's the fruits or the, the um, powdered produce here. And um, I also put a nice little surprise, a little kicker, is sour soft leaves. Um, and I put a little bit of our reishi, our mushroom spores, as well as the crystals. So this is a jam-packed herb. It doesn't take much. Really, actually, I just like to take a pinch. And see, this obviously will last a long time. This is actually just a half a pound in a jar. Uh, we sell pounds. We sell 10 pounds, bulk specials, and all kinds of neat things on our website. Um, this is all proprietary, hand-picked, uh, fresh harvested, as you can tell by the color. And this is why we actually are considered ranked number one in the United States, because we don't do the certified organic practices that are codec elementarius um, or re re regulated. Uh, we kind of do our own practice, which is just like you would an organ as an organic um, gardener. You do it everything with no sprays. No pesticides, no weeds, no propylene, no um, fillers, period. It is straight from nature, and we believe God had it right when it was made in nature. So that, and then this is the last step here I like to kind of I'll throw it on. And I could go on with more herbs, but I'm going to show you, this is where I wake up right first thing in the morning um, with, of course, water, cold, distilled water, spring. This is moringa, strawberry, bananas, a whole thing of bananas, ice, and it's moringa and almond milk, all pure, fresh, wild craft. And coconut sugar. And uh, kind of change your viewpoint from that, that structure, if that's what you want. Stay away from being the big old F-A-T word. And... Um, I want people to know there is a healthy fat, and I believe in that. And if I could establish that over time of building cellulose, muscle, and weight, 
Um, uh, PlotPalmTrees.com, Wildcraft Turmeric Root Organic Powder. Straight from PlotPalmTrees.com, one pound. It doesn't get any fresher than this. Look at that. Just pure golden yellow. I'm going to throw it in my carrot juice with apples and with the moringa. Throw that right. Okay, so here it comes to mind. Our world is not a beautiful place, but it could be. We all need to take responsibility for our actions. There are many different approaches out there that work and many that don't. But if you never try, well, you know, actually, you never will. What has been discovered, tested, and then there comes the plots. What hadn't been able to be recognized in this precious plant has been recognized. And what people are not seeing are the capabilities of this plant that it has to heal, weight loss, and more above you. So why on earth are we letting it pass by? So to help you understand the magnitude of this plant, my name is Jess. I have cancer. I have type 4. Very rare case of papillary carcinoma. I had the privilege to use moringa, and I had the capsules first. Thinking this would be horrible to drink, but <laughs> oh no, it was nothing like that. What I expected, and my banana smoothies, I called the green monster, and well, if you have a big family, it was so awesome. I've seen rashes go away. Energy, all right. <laughs> Pumped up. But most of all, my cancer is disappearing. No radiation, but honestly, it's nearly all gone. Also, having any illness can make you lose weight. Well, there are as real and as tiny as they come, but I was 31 kilograms, and now I'm up to a healthy 58 kilograms. It's amazing. If we want a better world, let's make it happen. No, not that. I'm Jesse. Check out the plots on our trailer. We're coming out the plot. If you're here for the cancer movie, don't forget to keep an update on that. That's some, that's some really good stuff. I'm going to show you all the things. Let's go do this. You can gain some weight. Yeah, yeah thumbs, thumbs up, up and share this if you like Clara. Like Clara. Do it, do for, it for Clara, Clara the, cat. the cat. You know, and if, if weight's the bad thing, if the Kit Kat, she's she's rattling a lot of this. If you like a lot of energy, you like to be trimmer. And actually, she's gained weight. You know, that's, that's your thing. There was a little time, to be honest, she was really lethargic and you watch her. thing, be a fruitarian. I've never seen like an overweight fruitarian, but I'm sure that it's possible, maybe. I don't know. Be a librarian um, for the next layer of vitamins, macro and micronutrients, and before that, but anyway, <laughs> probiotic enzymes. Anyway, <laughs> see, then that, that's pretty cool because you can find out different variations like avocados or durian, high fat foods, and things we find in nature that are probiotic enzymes are just right picked on off the, the probiotic enzymes, the tree and eaten. Now you take a look at this. Carrot juice after carrot juice after carrot juice. We got five pounds of carrots going on in this uh, Vitamix here. Eric Clot, live here at the Tropical Missouri Ranch. So nice to see you. Look lovely today. And uh, so we're going to kind of show you the super vitamin A food here, the carrot. And I actually tried to contact these people to see how they do their organic carrot practice. And uh, it's to no avail, so I'm still waiting on that. I will do a segment on that uh, coming soon. And uh, drink some carrot juice. This is what the doctor ordered. Lots of love to you. Good night. Have a wonderful rest of the uh, winter coming up.
Hello, hi, friends, family. So, Baranga Man here, plotpalmtree.com. Got my smoothie. I'll show you this. This is segment two for the watermelon. And what you want to do is cut it right down the middle. And this is fresh from our yard. Watermelon right out of Tropical Missouri Ranch. And it's October, the middle of. Straight and neat trick. What you want to do is you slice it like this, kind of like that, and then just right down the middle into pieces, just like that. And then you want to cut off these sides here. You see that? Just like that. And see what you have here is the uh, kind of like a watermelon popsicle. Mmm, that's so sweet. Wildcraft like that. Organic watermelon, y'all. So what you want to do for the winter? Because we always watermelons here. Yes. But if you just bought them at the store or what have you, uh, you get these bags here, which I have readily really available. I'll just kind of show you real quick because uh, we have a freezer full, so just like that. And I mean, we got 10 pounds of apples, pears, bananas not 10 pounds of bananas, but uh, you get the idea. See, and these will be like popsicles, like watermelon popsicles that keep you out there. They're amazing. Um, so, kind of another thing is when you start seeing your bananas kind of go bad, that's good anyway, but uh. Like, what you want to do is take them. You can do this with any type of banana, even if it's fresh. See, this one's kind of going bad. But the freezing will actually keep it kind of fresh. So you just put it in like that. Then you just fill them all up, and then you just get a nice shot, kind of squeeze out the air. You've got a, a, a what do you call it, a food saver or something that can suck out the air, or put them in mason jars. Uh, the jars won't break. Put some, uh, uh, what do you call it, silica in it, silica gel. You can get you can get from us. You can get from us. Van, we check this out. This is fresh proprietary picked soursop. Gubana, graviola, right here at plotpalmtrees.com. You get it right in the box like this. And this is actually the nicest way to do it. Believe it or not, it may look a little bit, um, you know, just kind of all out and, you know, breathable. That's really what it's about, is kind of having it this way. So if you get a box of soursop from us like this, this is perfectly fine. This is perfectly normal. This is kind of what it'll look like when you open the sucker up. It's got all these seeds. It's still fresh white. Uh, and if you don't get it and it's white, just let us know. It should have the green and the brown. Put this directly in your refrigerator or freezer immediately so you can enjoy it like this. And it will be freeze. It will be like a custard, like a sweet, like ice cream-like uh, substance. I love my soursop. I'm going to bust this guy open right here. This right here is about 7 pounds or so. We have the 5 pounds. we got 1 pound. 1 pound is about usually one of these guys. So they're pretty heavy. They, look, they don't look like they're that heavy. But they're pretty bulky guys. They're really uh, they're solid um, fruits, and um, so that's how they are. And you can um, get them. We got the moringa sop box. This is actually just the fresh proprietary hand-picked sour sop boxes. You can get it on eBay. Um, you just re recommend that one um, or our, our plotpalmtree.com. I'll leave a link in the description, of course. Um, and uh, this is all just look at that. Just pure cancer cure mechanism you can see it actually starting to kind of bust out if it's kind of got this white stuff on it that's fine too that's just it's kind of getting ready to want to burst open um, like I said putting it in the freezer makes it last longer since you have all these but say you want to eat these two within the week put these in the refrigerator and then save the rest for later this is the 10 pound box and we ship it right to you just like so uh, these are fresh proprietary picks from Jamaica 100% wild craft uh, top triple a plus quality and um so yeah check that out we're the first and only online distributor for soursop it is a very difficult difficult fruit to uh, distribute as we're starting to find out but uh, we're willing to do it ship it fast this goes straight out when we get it and it goes to you directly and um, from there you receive it uh, two to three business days and like I said just make sure to keep it fresh by putting it in the freezer uh, I'm doing a segment right now I've been eating I've already ate about 
10 of the seeds from the actual fruit and I like to save some so I can grow it myself but uh, see I'll just show you right in front of you that they say they advise not to eat the, the, um, the seeds and see here so this is like this is actually how you're supposed to eat it right here like this you don't really need a fork it's difficult to eat with a fork or spoon okay so I'm gonna show you this amazing drink here this is the fresh pears apples bananas and then ice with the moringa, which we put the moringa in the last segment into the freezer. Kind of showed you when you get your big bag of moringa, you can put it in Ziploc bags, you can get our Mylar bags and separately put them in there and uh, keep it fresh through the winter if you've got bulk or keeping it in a dark area or even the refrigerator. I would say the ones that's going to be your uh, kind of uh, on hand moringa or other powders is just put them in the refrigerators, wherever your refrigerator is, and then whatever you're not at yet and it's sealed or it's closed, uh, you know, like we have it. Our website, everything you get is you know sealed and fresh with mylar, and then putting it in the freezer, so, so it stays fresh for a longer time. Uh, that will enhance the uh, exploration on all that as well. So yeah, that's how you do that with all these bananas. And I'm gonna tell you, throw you can throw in some. Uh, for instance, got my gas mask here. We'll probably be distributing these as well. Just for, you know, you never know when you need them. <laughs> got moringa caps, all fresh, 400 caps there. Kind of my daily. Thing. Um, I want to show you, just kind of throw in some uh, watermelon, just like that. I like to take the, uh, I get a box and I go, out, I, I go outside and I throw all these remains, I get a box in here too and then I can put it in that box and just feed the yard, throw it, start throwing it back, feed your trees, feed your garden, keep all this stuff, this is fresh compost type stuff. And, that will feed the yard. So, um, see? Omega 3, 6, and 9, your nuts like hemp, are high in protein. Your spirulina, your chlorella is high in the B12, will help kind of create a digestive me mechanism, probiotic enzymes for the mineralization. All those enzymes, you know, barely wash it off, and you got that B12 and live active enzymes in the. Um... Aloha here, friends. This is the soursop uh, in a jar, fresh fruit, proprietary and organic, all natural non-sprayed and uh, I'll have a more elaborate video perfect mix between sour and sop sweetness like literally perfect between sour and being so, uh, very sweet um, sour sop in a jar you take all the rinds off and it's just the fresh fruit and it sour sop fruit and these are sour sop babies little babies Chop up your um, goods and freeze them. Froze most of it. It's winter time. I have a prepper video on that. How you can probiotic enzymes. And the apple. I wish I had some fruits to sh share with you. I've just ate all of them. I've been juiced in Ziploc bags. Say, so. okay. So, well, my friends, this is the Vitamix Super 5000, and what I got here is the my own little rendition of fresh moringa leaves. And I separated the stems here. This is what you would do. It's called shade drying. And you could put it in a container like so and contain it. Now, what's interesting about this particular Vitamix is you have a dry and a um, wet. This is the dry for powders and stuff, so you take go like that, you got some in there. These are shade dry, and then you can contain it, you know, later, like that. And, uh, of course, where's the top? Here it is. So you just put the top on the dry, and what you want to do is kind of slowly kind of put it on low. You got variable, high, and having it on. See that? That's variable. There's nothing going on that's too much here. I can speak. <laughs> See how it begins to turn to powder. Slowly going to increase it. This is called variable. So high, it, it, it actually pulses it. You can use grains and other things to turn it into a powder. Because it pushes it up. If you notice it's jumping, look at it, it's coming back up. You see, it, it, the powder is jumping up. Where most Vitamixes with the wet blade, it turns the opposite direction. This blade here, actually, is sharper. And if I were to show you this one, stole it. So it shoots the herbs up, so your herbs become powder instead of a, a wet moisture. It dries it. Okay. And I could keep going, but the Vitamix in particular doesn't heat up. I see a lot of that powder. It still could probably keep going. It's kind of a wet, it wasn't fully dry either, was it? Right. No, I, I just am showing you this for an introduction. I'm just saying. 
like it, it wasn't like purely fully dried out. But well, I, I, you keep right. going, yeah. and that, and these are actually the moringa branches, and I have to keep drying it a little bit more. But it's almost you still got that moisture to it, and uh, when you let it dry all the way, you have something that will look like this eventually. Very fine ground, and I should be very good with my spoon. But this is 10 pounds after you take just leaves. You see how much it made there, and I can weigh it. And you can end up with a pound. You put it in your stein. If you have a stein, if you're lucky enough to have a German stein, you can put it in there and store it up on your shelf, not your printer. And um, this is kind of the business edge. Top comes a laboratory welcome. And uh, see there? That's fine powder. That's, after a little while, after it's dried completely, and this still has a moisture content. It and it smells really good. It's so, wow, fresh. You know, clay. This is like your uh, clay. I forget what they call that benzonite clay. It's very similar. You could probably even wet moisture your face. You can put it on your face. You can take our famous moringa oil, which this is for a lucky winner, the moringa queen of the week, and she'll end up receiving this. So you see that. And uh, pretty much, you know, I'm not going to use any of those, but you can. And up with a little dropper. We'll be selling these one ounces now from now on. I think believe 1995. It's a new deal uh, for more smaller ones uh, to give our angel liquid try. And you can take this and you can put it on a little tray, the oil, and then put a, a one part to one part with the powder and put it on your face. So you're feeding your cells the powder and the um, moringa oil. What do you think the meaning of life is? To live and to live in a mystery and to find purpose. And to live in the now magic <sighs> now the central nervous system damages the sense of balance and motor skills, which leads to increasingly intense body convulsions and ultimately death. Hey everybody, this is really Bravo here. Welcome to another episode. So today is Motivational Mondays and here to help motivate you for the week. And today's topic is an important one. It's about fish, fish and seafood. We've been, we've been told forever that fish is really good for you. It's a health food, but is it really? That's what I'm gonna talk about today. And I have a big history of fish. I come from a small fishing community and we basically had fish every night. And I tell you a secret, I hated it. As my mom and my family knows, I hated it. Okay, I used to come to the kitchen table, to the dining room table with my pockets filled full of tissues. So every time that my dad and my mom would look down to have a bite of their fish, I would be regurgitating it into the tissues and putting it into my pockets. And then after dinner, I would flush it down the toilet. So you can see, I, yeah, from an early age, I hated fish. But that did change as I got older, and I'll talk about that soon. So is it really a health food? No, it's not. Let's get into why it is not a health food. Check this out. We know that seafood contains amounts of mercury, but just how much is there, really? A new device can actually test a piece of fish in less than a minute for pennies a serving. Right. There is too much mercury in a third of the fish tested by one chemical engineer. We've tested probably 75,000 fish and since 2004. We've certainly found more mercury in fish than we thought would be there. Mal Wittenberg with Safe Harbor Seafood Certification invented this mercury detection machine which challenges the safety standards set by the FDA. The federal government allows seafood to contain one part per million of mercury. That's twice the levels allowed in Canada and Europe. Japan's is even lower. Safe Harbor also sets the limits much lower by taking the industry average for each species of fish and if the mercury concentration in a sample goes over, it fails. We put Bay Area Sushi to the test, taking samples from grocery stores and boutique markets to restaurant chains and high-end sushi houses. Technician Bob Bragg drills out a piece the size of a grain of rice and measures for mercury concentration. First from Safeway's Deli, sushi made with yellowfin or ahi tuna. And the mercury concentration is 0.953. The standard for ahi is 0.4 parts per million, so it's twice the limit set by Safe Harbor. Would you eat it? No. In this batch of 26 sushi samples, salmon from Bristol Farms, a boutique market in downtown San Francisco, and hamachi, or yellowtail, from Japantown's Nijia Market, both failed the safe harbor test. Yellowtail from Benihana Chain Restaurant and more pricey sushi bar Ozumo both hit above the 0.4 parts per million limit set by safe harbor and failed. That highlights the variability of mercury in seafood. You just don't know unless you test it. You can't look at it, you can't predict it. Currently, the FDA conducts blanket tests on random batches of fish, with the costly results arriving in a week, well after the fish is sold. Okay, so it's obvious, folks, that the government is not looking after us, so we have to look after ourselves. The level of mercury in those fish was ridiculous, okay? I used to be a huge sushi buff. I was at sushi bar five, six times a week, 
going into the sashimi. So that explains some of the symptoms that I was having at the time. Seriously, look, my mercury levels would have been huge. And what happens is methyl mercury, it, it comes from our environment, it goes into the ocean, from big you know, industries like the pharmaceutical industry, meat and dairy industry, all those nasty chemicals come into the air, go into the ocean, they come through the waterways into our big beautiful ocean and they poison it. And then you know what? They concentrate in the fat of these fish. Nine million times of what's in the water, it concentrates into the fish and then we eat it and then we expect to be healthy. So up next is some serious methyl mercury poisoning. Check it out. In 1954, the sanitation office of Minamata City began receiving reports of an unknown epilepsy-like affliction which has since become known as Minamata disease. Since the cause of the disease had not been identified, patients were isolated to prevent spread of the disease. In 1957, the Minamata Disease Research Group of Kumamoto University announced that Minamata disease is a toxic disorder of the central nervous system caused by certain organic mercury compounds transmitted through the intake of seafood. They isolated organic mercury as the sole cause. In the same year, extremely toxic levels of organic mercury were detected in the human patients. The report submitted to the Ministry of Health and Welfare stated that the underlying cause was organic mercury in seafood and the wastewater discharge from the factory was suspected. Afflicted patients continued to be found until 1960. A rash of babies were born with brain damage and extreme physical disabilities. The governor of Kumamoto requested a voluntary ban on catches of seafood from the bay. Wow, so that's some seriously nasty, nasty business. And I know some of you out there are saying, oh, I'm gonna be okay, it's fine. You know, that's just an extreme case of methamercury poisoning. I only have a couple of times a week. Really stop scaring us. Well, folks, if you have it even a little bit, if you keep ingesting the fish, then your, the mercury levels in your body are going to increase because it accumulates in your tissues. And you may not make that connection between that symptom that you're experiencing and the fish that you're consuming and that methyl mercury poisoning that you're experiencing. Now, Sue Kwan, everybody knows Sue Kwan, she's KPIX News, and she decided to do a super size me uh, with um, Albacore tuna. And I said, Sue, you shouldn't do this. She said, well, I've already had my kids, and I ate a lot of tuna when I was younger, and I don't think it was too bad. I can't remember um, too much going on then, but, you know, maybe it's my memory is going. So, so let me just uh, eat it for 10 days. So she ate a can of tuna for 10 days, and her mercury went from 4.2 to 8.9. She said, well, I want to do it for another 10 days. I said, you really shouldn't do this, Sue, because you know, I can't tell her ethically to eat mercury every day. Yet people do it on a regular basis. So then her mercury went up to 17.2. And um, her projected mercury level would have been in the 50s uh, had she continued at that rate. Um, of course, she went on the news and, and talked about it. The fishing industry wasn't too happy. They wrote a big letter back to Sue Kwan and um, mentioned my name in the letter 15 times um, and uh, weren't too happy with Super Size Me Albacore Tuna. But, it just goes to show that it does accumulate. So what did the FDA say about their action level? And this is in an email that I got <clears throat> that, that uh, Sue uh, forwarded to me. It said, from the FDA uh, official said, I will speak about how the FDA defines an action level. The action level is a non-binding guidance that the FDA issues to establish a level of a contaminant that may be regarded as adulterated or illegal. The action level serves as guidance for the FDA, but does not commit the FDA to take any action. You know, um, if you're going to have an action level and don't take action, then why are you having an action level? So that's why um, when you go to the grocery stores, you can see uh, fish being tested by all kinds of media personnel and, and uh, uh, non-government organizations that can be two, three, and four parts per million in the grocery store. And there's no warning as to um, that happening because they really can't test every fish. I should say, let me back up, they can test every fish. There is a test. Microanalytical Systems has offered the FDA and the FDA has declined telling microanalytical systems that what are we going to do with the fish that don't pass? I'll leave that for you to ponder. Researchers used ultrasound to measure the brain size in newborns of mothers who had high body levels of mercury compared to a control group of women who had low levels of mercury. Let's put that into practical terms. Compared to the low level control group, here's where the high level mercury women were. Now, How much canned tuna consumption is that equivalent to? Here's what your body mercury burden is if you eat one serving of canned tuna a day, about half a can. Here's what two cans a week will do to you, and this is just one can a week. So the bodies of the women suffering high mercury contamination in the ultrasound brain study were considered heavily contaminated, but even just a, a little canned tuna once in a while could bump your levels even higher. So the high really wasn't that high, but still, what did they find? They demonstrated 
that newborns born to mothers with higher mercury hair levels had cerebellums up to 14% shorter than those born to mothers with lower mercury hair levels. They conclude that prenatal exposure to what may be considered really low levels of methylmercury does indeed influence fetal brain development as detected by decreased size of a newborn's brain. So I know some of you are saying, oh, the fish oil's okay. I love my fish oil. I have it every morning. Fish oil's safe. No, it's not, folks, okay? One thing in particular that has been found in fish oil is PCBs, nasty, dangerous chemicals that should never, ever be in the human body. They were banned for use back in 1979 for a reason, okay? Because they are dangerous chemicals. And they've been found in the fish oil, they've been found in fish, because look, like I said before, the chemicals that are found in the environment around the fish, aka the ocean, are concentrated around 9 million times in the fish's flesh. So you're consuming, when you're consuming that oil, when you're consuming that fish, you're consuming a whole lot of other stuff that you need to be made aware of. Check this out. Now to an important medical alert. Fish oil supplements are constantly touted for their health benefits because they contain omega-3 fatty acids. But a new lawsuit contends they may contain something else too, PCBs, industrial chemicals that were banned back in the 1970s because they caused cancer and birth defects. Beneath the surface of waterways like the Chesapeake Bay, small filter fish ingest polychlorinated biphenyl compounds, or PCBs, that were deposited there decades ago by electric electrical plants and other polluters. When environmental activists tested 10 different fish oil supplements, they say every one contained PCBs. According to California law, people should not be exposed to more than 90 nanograms of this carcinogen a day, but the results showed three of the 10 contained much more than that. Nature made cod liver oil and now foods salmon oil and double strength cod liver oil. People are being exposed to PCBs through these products and they're not being told. Are purported benefits of fish oil supplementation for the prevention and treatment of heart disease just a fish tail? Those advised to eat oily fish, and particularly those supplied with fish oil capsules, had a higher risk of cardiac death. Put all the studies together, and there's no justification for the use of omega-3s as a structured intervention in everyday clinical practice, or for guidelines supporting more dietary omega-3s. Well, given the new meta-analysis and other negative meta-analyses, our job as doctors should be to stop highly marketed fish oil supplementation in all of our patients. But hang on a second, Freely. I eat farm fish. I eat farm salmon. It's really healthy. Well, I hate to break it to you, but it is not. It's just as bad as ocean fish, if not worse. So when it comes down to the question of farm or ocean, it's like, would you rather a punch in the face or a kick in the guts? The challenge of our time is to reconnect ourselves back into that world and see the repercussions of what we're doing. And nothing illustrates the issue better than the meal that I just sat down today. You all sat here and chowed down on farmed salmon, and obviously you don't give a shit about what you're putting into your body. You know what a farmed salmon is? It's filled with toxic chemicals. You know, where does, and where does uh, the food that you feed your salmon? I know Tasmanian salmon. Those are not Tasmanian salmon. Those are Atlantic salmon that are brought and raised in cages in Tasmania. You, when you render down these fish into pellets, you concentrate whatever's in them. Then you feed the pellets to the salmon, and you concentrate what's in the pellets. So if you check those salmon, they're filled with dioxin, PCBs, dildrin, Teflon, malachite, green. You can go down the list, and that's what you just put into your bodies. You know, and, and, and you know, when you feed salmon pellets, the flesh comes out gray. You would need a salmon that was gray. A week before they're to go to the market, the buyer, the seller comes to the buyer with a, a fan of colors from bright red to yellow and says, what color do you want your salmon? They also had to figure out a way to make grayish fish flesh look pink, which it is naturally when pulled out of the ocean. So the aquaculture industry feeds farmed fish artificial coloring. This is from the drug company Roche. Fish farmers get to pick out the color they want to dye their flesh like paint chips. You choose, and they feed it a dye the last week, so the nice orange color you ate is the dye they fed the fish. I'm not even going to talk about the ecological consequences of growing these carnivores in open net pens where sea lice and disease are spreading to the wild fish in the neighborhood and all of the buildup of feces under these net pens. The act of consuming that salmon has repercussions that go far beyond this room that go around the world. But we live in a world in which these connections are shattered and we don't see them any longer. 80% of all seafood sold in the U.S. is now imported. Now, I don't think people have any idea how much uh, imported seafood is coming into this country. The FDA inspects and tests less than 1% of all seafood imports. Less than 1% of all seafood imports. And when it does, it frequently finds filthy fish and banned chemicals. FDA records show page after page of rejected shipments. Catfish from China, veterinary drugs. Swordfish from Vietnam, poisonous. Snapper from Malaysia, 
filthy. If it's from a foreign country, I'd be very cautious. I wouldn't eat it. One of the things often found in this imported fish is a fungicide called malachite green. It's illegal to use in food because it causes cancer and birth defects. Lab tests routinely detect antibiotics banned for use in food in the United States. Antibiotics are used to treat fish raised in crowded conditions that can breed bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Food safety advocates say the FDA is not doing enough to protect consumers. Consumers may be getting a dose of antibiotics with their seafood dinner, and that's something that the government should stop. Lab testers say fish farmers in nations like China play a cat and mouse game with them. When the lab rejects shipments for an illegal chemical, foreign fish farmers simply switch to another harmful chemical. They know it's illegal, they know it hurts people, but they do it anyway. Researchers say the chemicals and antibiotics found may not make you sick immediately, but eaten over a long period of time, they pose a significant health risk. When you go out to a seafood restaurant, what type of seafood do you order? I don't. <laughs> Why take the chance? So we've got methyl mercury poisoning, we've got PCBs, we've got artificial colors, we've got antibodies, a whole lot of other chemicals, nasty chemicals that you are concentrating in your body. You're eating the flesh of the fish and then you're taking it in, putting yourself at risk of serious, serious disease. Is it really worth it? Is it worth it to keep consuming this flesh of the fish? No, it's not. And oh, I forgot to mention parasitic worms. There's a parasitic worm in fish called Anasakis. This year we learned that about two-thirds of retail fish samples came up positive for them. This is what they look like. They're really quite small, actually. Uh, you can see two here kind of peeking out of some sushi. Uh, because people eat fish raw, parasites are always a concern. But the unique thing about these worms is that our bodies can be so sensitive to them that the worms can trigger an allergic reaction dead or alive, even if they're cooked. So we're finding some people that are allergic to fish really aren't. They're allergic to the dead worms in the fish. In fact, because we feed so much fish meal to chickens, you can have an allergic reaction to a parasitic fish worm and not even eat fish at all. With prevailing westerly winds over Japan, nuclear fallout from the Fukushima nuclear power plant tragedy was detected throughout North America at levels comparable to those seen 25 years earlier from Chernobyl, the only other Category 7 nuclear event in history. Of all the radiation released, only a tiny fraction of the fallout reached U.S. shores. Uh, most was absorbed by the Pacific Ocean. What does that mean for seafood safety? Researchers report unequivocal evidence that Pacific bluefin tuna have transported Fukushima-derived radioactive fallout across the entire North Pacific Ocean. Uh, tuna actually migrate from Japan to California and appear to have taken some radioactivity with them. So what then happens if you eat seafood? Researchers measured the increase in radioactive polonium levels in semen after a single seafood meal, caused a 300% spike in levels. Uh, probably not enough to cause infertility, but that was just one meal. Fish and other sea animals are sensitive, intelligent creatures who have a demonstrated capacity to suffer pain. Massive trawling nets indiscriminately drag hundreds of tons of fish and other animals along the ocean floor. As they are dragged up from the ocean depths, the fish undergo excruciatingly painful decompression. The extreme changes in pressure can rupture their swim bladders and pop out their eyes. They are then tossed on board where the surviving fish either suffocate or are crushed to death. Others are still alive when they are hacked apart on these floating slaughterhouses. Untold millions of dolphins, turtles, and other non-target aquatic animals are also killed by ocean trawler nets each year. Today, approximately one in five fish consumed worldwide is raised in captivity. Like factory farmed animals on land, farm raised fish are crowded by the tens of thousands in small disease and excrement ridden areas for their entire lives. When fish reach market weight, they are loaded onto tanker trucks and shipped to slaughter, where common killing methods include slow suffocation. because it is obviously toxic for your body. Do you want to keep building that mercury in your tissues and putting yourself at risk? It is crazy, crazy, crazy to can keep consuming it after all of that has been presented to you. And it's also cruel. You know, you can eat in a way that doesn't hurt any other being around you. From this moment, you can go cruelty-free. You can make the choice, drop the excuses, and pick up a plant-based diet. It's up to you. And cruelty-free, I mean for yourself as well, because you're actually making yourself healthier. It is a healthier way to live. So it is win-win on every level. And folks, eating fish is not sustainable. It is raping the ocean, as you saw from that video. Raping the ocean is not nice to the fish. Simply not nice at all. It's barbaric. It's disgusting. And it's also not healthy. It's toxic. So why would you not give it up? There's so many fantastic vegan foods that can replace the fish. So 
So please make the right choice for yourself, for the fish, for the environment, everything that you do, every little bit of food that you eat has a ripple effect around you, okay? It's not each to their own, everyone can eat whatever they want, no, we're in this together, we need to make conscious choices when we sit down to eat. So I hope that was informative, I hope that inspired you to give up the fish, okay? So don't forget to go root yourself, or root yourself, and I will see you soon. Farmed animals are every bit as intelligent, curious, and capable of feeling pain and suffering as the dogs and cats so many of us know and love. If you are at all moved by this film, please do your part. Make a commitment today to explore a vegan diet. It could be one of the best decisions of your life. By withdrawing our support of this cruel and violent system, we can put our ethics on the table and make a statement for a kinder and more compassionate society for all animals. Banana girl. Go free to church, son.